have you done your introduction? Yeah, I just sort of asked who, who's seen this, who was here last year? Yeah. It, so, <coughs> same presentation, I think I changed the date. Yeah. Okay, so uh, welcome, welcome. Um, the schedule changed, so you may have come here to listen to some other talk, but you got, you got me instead. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, we're talking about sailing up in. And actually, this is not all correct because I know that these videos are in the bottom, so we haven't got those. Uh, but basically, just try and give you a bit of theory and then just talk about the adjustments and just make you think about the things that you can do to make the boat go better, and go faster uh, when you're sailing up in. Um, why are we doing this? It's like we're racing. We're talking about racing. We're not cruising. So if you're on a cruising boat, you go and clean off your jib, you pull the main on, clean it, and you put the auto helm on, and you get your drinks out, and you relax and sail along. But with racing, you've got to racing. You've got to um, keep adjusting. And when you think about it, a race it takes an hour, an hour and a half usually, and so you just got to keep adjusting. You just keep adjusting. You really, it's a, a full-on concentration for that short period of time. Uh, you're going uphill probably two thirds of the time, and downhill less, uh, one third. But you really you just got to keep that concentration going all the time. So you've got to keep adjusting. And the reason you're doing this is just to make, get the optimum performance out of your boat. Okay, so the wind and the waves are never constant. You know the wind's shifting, and some days it's shifting a lot, some days it's only a little bit. But you've got to um, keep adjusting. The pressure is changing, and as it gets a bit stronger, you've got to uh, pull your sails on a bit more to get the same settings, and if it's lighter, you've got to ease them a bit. It's a standard thing you do, and you're just forever um, changing your trim. Similarly with the waves, if you're in waves, on sometimes on static llamas, sometimes the winds change direction, but the waves, been, winds been blowing for a long time in one continuous direction. You might be going on port tack, you might be going into the waves, on starboard tack, you're going across the waves. So you sometimes have to have different trim settings from tack to tack. So it's, you just got to keep changing things, think about these things. Um, the, I go down the third one there. Um, a good thing is to compare how you're going against the boat around you. That's, if, you if you think you're right and that, that someone's right next to you and they're actually going forward or they're going higher than you, then um, you take note of it. You, you look and you don't just ignore them and if they start going forward and you, you start hearing that that way, you know they're coming forward, you've got to quickly make an adjustment, otherwise they're going to keep going forward and take your air. So you've got to um, look at the boats around you. So often before a race, it's, it's race starts, you go out and you go and do a bit of practice about other boats that are going to win. You find a fellow competitor and line up with them and go sailing along together and see how your speed's going with them, see how your height is going with them. So you might be going fast, but you might be going low, so you need to go pull your sails on a bit more and sail a bit higher, a bit slower, but if you, um, you start to go on the starting line with all the boats lined up and you're going low and fast, you're not going to do that for very long because someone's going to be underneath you, pushing you up and slowing you down. So you've got to get your settings all right before the start. So you, a lot of these adjustments we're going to talk about, you try and figure it out before the start and try and set it up as, the boat up as best you can for the wind conditions at that time so that you're ready to start the race. Um, actually, after the start too, off the starting line, you're going along and you, you really want to judge how you're going against the boat next to you. And usually you're trying to hold your lane, keep your air clear, and so you don't want to be shooting off down low unless you've got no one underneath you. Then you can charge off and move out forward of the boats around you. But often you're pinching off the starting line trying to hold your position. Some boats are tacking away because they don't like the dirty air they've got, and then you've got a bit more room. A minute or so <coughs> into the race, you can then maybe go from the high mode to the fast mode, which is slightly cracked off from the high mode. Um, okay, so I'm going to try and discuss how to do all this. Um, first off, you, you, your sails are the engine. That's all you've got to, to adjust to, to make yourself go. You haven't got a you haven't got a propeller going down below, so you've got to use the sails. That's what you've got, and some people look at a sail and can't tell if it's good or bad or whatever. So just, you've got to actually be a bit analytical 
about it and try and say, okay, how deep is the shape of my sail? Is it, is it these? And because you can, with the, most boats you're sailing on, you can adjust the rigs and stuff so you can change the shape of the sails. So you've got to think about, is this mainsail, you pull it on, is that mainsail too deep? Does it look too full? Or does it look too flat? Just look at the shape and um, where the shape is, where it is. Is it um, is the fullness in the middle of the sail or is it the back of the sail, which is bad? Or is it further forward and sort of work out where the fullness is and how deep it is. If you think it's too deep, then you do something about it to make it less deep. So you can, you've got controls to do something about it. The other thing is, apart from the, the, the depth of the sail, is the, the twist of the sail. You usually look at the leech. You don't look at the luft of twist because you can't, the mast there is not going to twist. But uh, your leech is how much twist you've got on the leech of the sail, how much is twisted off uh, as, the, as you go up the leech. Um, some people say with a lot of twist, some people say with very little twist. It's a continual, continual debate that I have with people because I don't like too much twist. But um, there's some very good sailors who like a lot of twist. And so it's what's right and what's wrong is, again, how you go relative to the other boats around you. Um, center of center lateral resistance. This is the balance of the boat, which I'll sort of come back to. There's a diagram coming up you know, after this. Um, yeah, basically, if you trim your mainsail on too hard, you get windward helm. And that'll, what, what happens is you don't have so much twist in your sail, you pull the main sheet on hard, the leech gets very straight. What it means is it's pushing the, the back of the boat, where the leech of the mainsail is, to leeward, so it makes the bow go to windward, so it gives you that windward help. So it's just, uh, this is what happens. Uh, the opposite happens if you've got a mainsail very twisted and your jib's on hard, the bow will be wanting to go away all the time, so you're forever correcting with your steering to, to make it go straight. Um, when you're on a big boat, the helms person should be discussing with the main sheet trimmer and the jib trimmer what they're feeling so that you communicate amongst the three of you. They're the three key people going upwind, so you get the balance right and you get the boat going to its best performance. Yeah, so jib and mainsail, sometimes it's really nice on a big boat to step back. If you're a main sheet trimmer, just leave the main sheet and go back to behind the mainsail look up the mainsail twist and look at the jib twist and you sort of see if they're about the same. You really shouldn't be having a jib leech sheet, the leech of the jib on tight and the mainsail twisted off a lot. It should be sympathetic. So it's always a good trick sometimes. Or a tactician could always, if he's on a big boat, he can get behind and say, the jib's on really tight and the mains off a lot. You just you give that input back to the trimmers. Uh, by the way, anyone can ask questions as we go along here. If you don't understand, if you can't hear me, don't you? Uh, I'd like some input from anyone, including you, Jimmy. I need to ask okay. one question. This is a simple diagram. Um, <laughs> I mentioned to. before, uh, center of center lateral resistance. If you get these, usually a yacht designer is trying to make these lines line up so the boat's in balance. That's what you're trying to do. So, uh, uh, right. So, in this instance, the center of effort of the sail is behind the keel, the lateral resistance. So you can think of the pressure in the sail there is going to push the stern down, it's going to give you wind at home. Behind this line here, this aft is here. So if you put a jib on here, there's more sail area here. It brings this center effort forward and maybe it lines up. Ideally, when you're sailing along, you don't want to be correcting with your rudder, using a tiller, to make the boat sail in a straight line. You want the boat to sail in a straight line, and so you want the sail trimmed equally so that the boat will just go forward. If you have your helm correcting to make yourself go forward, um, it means your rudder's at a bad angle to the, the wake, and so the rudder is drag, slowing you down. So it's not fast. So really you want your, your rudder lined up in the center of the boat, and you want very light helm. Now some people don't like sailing with too much light helm because it's, it's insensitive, you can't, you can't feel it. So sometimes you try and set that with a, a little bit of wind at helm just so that it's easy to steer. The boat's sort of trying to nudge up and you're slightly correct. But you don't want to be correcting a lot with the helm. So often I'm sailing on an echelons with Jimmy or something, I'm asking how does the helm feel? Because so, I'm trimming the sails and I, I don't know, I need him to tell me 
the helmsman's got to know if you're using a lot of rudder to correct. And if you're having to correct a lot, then you've got to make some sail adjustments or rig adjustments to get, get the, the rudder back in line. If there's less resistance on the rudder, you don't get it. Question? Okay. Yep. I'm here. Okay. Um, do you subscribe to the theory that uh, by creating a little bit of weather helm, uh, actually then using the helm to give a lift to the boat so it actually so she points higher? No, it doesn't, it doesn't point high, it just feels like it does. It, it'll, it, it the, may the, not have the di direction of pointing higher, but it should be sort of side edging, yeah, sort of, edging to windward. Yeah, it's just, it'll, it'll, it'll point a bit higher if you have, if you, let's go to the extreme. If you have a lot of wind at helm, you're trying to correct it. So the boat's yeah. pointing up into the wind, yeah. but you're correcting it with the rudder. Yeah. So you're pointing high, but you're going slow. Yeah. Right? Because you, you, you can't keep pointing up there. And, right. You can't let it keep going up because it'll just go ahead to wind. Yeah. Right? So you've got to go forward. Right. And so you've got to find that balance. That's why I say the ideal one is to have a really light helm, but most people don't like that. They want to just feel a little bit of wind at helm. Ideally, um, people like Russell Coots, who's one of the best sailors in the world, he he's really wants the crew to trim the, uh, trim the sails so he doesn't have to move the helm at all. He wants the sails to steer the boat. He really is fastidious about it. He wants the rudder in the centre line. And so he's trying to achieve that all the time he sails on the boat to sails on. And so it's, um, it's uh, really important to try and let the, the, the foils do the work to give you the lift. Not just artificially point the boat up to give you the lift. Thank you. Okay. It was mentioned in this forum last week. Yeah. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Yes. And what happened? <laughs> Did I give the same answer? No. No. <laughs> no, it was suggested as a good idea. Let's go to you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Sorry about that. That's really good. Right, my view is if you're going fast, then the foils will do the, give you the lift, or give you much less drag. So if you point up and you're going slow, it'll just drift sideways in here. No, no, I agree with you, but uh, okay. interesting. Oh. Okay, um, I mentioned before the depth of sail. This is a, a formula <laughs> for it, but really you don't need that. You just need to know how deep it is. It's just something you get used to looking at. If you're not used to looking at it, there are some um, sails that have got draft stripes in them, so you can have a look, so it gives you a better visual input. And it's not so much... It's always how, much, how deep it is, and it's where it is. Where's this position? Is it 30%, 40%, 50%? As I said, if it's back behind 50%, it's probably not too good, because your sail's a bit old and needs, needs a new one. But um, this is something you just got to think about when you look at sails, and it's often the first thing you do when you go out to you pull the sails up, you leave the dock, and you go and you pull your main on and have a look at it, and you think, oh, because you've set your rigging up at the dock, Pull this on, you immediately look and say, oh, that main's too full, or that main's too flat. You, it's a sort of, a, it should be an instant recognition. You shouldn't just pull it on and say, okay, I've got a triangle up here. <laughs> you should be looking at, trying to visualize the depth of the sails you've got for that rig setup that you had, which is set up when you left the top. So I'm not talking about rig setups here today. But that sort of can affect your sail shapes and things like that. I think someone else is talking about Richard, don't I? Um, Maybe not this we've time. We've probably glossed over that one, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> Covered in different topics. Okay, uh, I might, some of these things might repeat what I've said. But, uh, uh, right, so it's all there. Um, yeah, so the top one, you've got more twist in the sail there in the mainsail than the, there's not so much pressure on the the stern of the boat to go to leeward, so that means the bow. So you get lee helm. Right? If, you have, if you have the jib on hard and the main sort of off, right? that's going to give you a bit of lee helm. Vice versa, if you come the main arm tight, close leech, your jib's where it is, it'll push the stern to leeward and make your point. So this is sort of something you look at how much twist you put in the sail, how much you're going to pull the main sheet on, how subtle you want to be about it to try and keep the sails balanced. One thing about things, you really should think about this around going around the top mark or coming around the bottom mark. It's really important to help. You can make the sail steer the boat. In fact, in the old days, I used to sail a, a 
Flying Dutchman was that we had fixed rudders and so we had to sail off the beach in waves without a rudder because you couldn't put it down because you're off the beach. And so you had to sail out with two sails, trim the sails, steer it out through the waves to get out. Then once you get outside past the waves, you put the rudder down. So you really got to use, know how to steer a boat without a rudder. And it's the same principle. As you're going around the top mark, you want to be able to blow that main, sh main shoot off quickly, but you can keep the jib on, so it'll help push the bow around, help the boat steer. It means that you don't have to use as much rudder to turn the boat. The rudder is drag, as I told you before, and so therefore the sails will steer the boat around the mark. Similarly, at the bottom mark, you're coming in, you've got your spinning it down, if you have one, you the bottom mark, you pull the main sheet on very, very quickly, but you bring your jib on very slowly. Because you don't want the jib on hard as you're trying to turn the boat up into the wind. Because the, the wind is going square to the, the sail. Right? So you, it's very important that you want the main sheet to come on quickly because it will push the stern to loop. It will help the skipper turn the boat around the mark. So you, it doesn't really matter too much if you have actually a flappy jib going around the mark. It's probably a good thing in some ways because an over-trimmed jib going around the bottom mark is much worse than a flapping jib around the bottom mark. So you use the, use the sails to help turn the boat in those two instances. Um, there's something just to visualise how much twist. It's, it's, again, it's hard. If you've got the stripes in the sails, that helps a bit. But sometimes you, you can't, you look at it as so you don't know how much twist there, you don't know if it's twisted a lot. Uh, a few ways to tell, um, one is you can just look for, you can sort of get under the boom and look up and try and see how much twist you've got inside. Uh, we have uh, leech ribbons on the most mainsails these days. Most of them are, all oh, you put a leech ribbon here, 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 here. Most, you can ignore all those. It's only really this top one here is the one that you should be looking at for your, how much twist. It's the, it's the top pattern leech ribbon. That's the one you really want to know. And most of the boats I sail on, if it's just a, a moderate sort of 8 or 10 knot wind, you want to lose that ribbon 50% of the time. It's a really good guide. That, you, that ribbon's flowing and then you can't see it because it goes around the back. When it's flowing, it goes back. So it's trying to flow but it can't all the time. That's a really good guide to <coughs> a nice twist in the sail. Now it's, it's a very general comment but it's, it sort of works. When it's windy, it'll be flying all the time because there'll be so much wind going across the sail. It doesn't matter how much twist, the, the wind's going to blow it and make that leech ribbon work. If it's lightish air and you can't see the top ribbon, that's bad. You, you just, you've made you've closed the leech too much. So you, you want to be able to see that leech ribbon. It's a bit, it gets variable. In light air, you probably want to see it 80% of the time. So as it gets, the wind comes up a bit, maybe you want to see 50% time, and then you'll, you'll see it all the time when it's windy. Because your leech, you'll be flattening out your sails when it's windy, so you, the air blows through it. But when you've got some fairly deep curvature in the sail, you want some twist up the top. And so just a really good guide. If it's, it's moderate, like, like the moderate wind, 50% of the time you see that top. You can ignore the other ones, but the one right up the top is the important one. The other one, sometimes they put leech, uh, uh, ribbons in here, here, uh, along this top one here. And they're up from good to see the depth of the sail. If you find that those ribbons in the middle of the sail at the top are not flowing, they're spinning around or pointing other ways, I mean, you know you're probably a bit too deep. You're not getting flow there. It's the mast disturbing it or it's just a bit too deep. So it's another guide to see the depth of the sail, how much you put in. But it's a, it's a very general comment. I'm not saying it's the... You live by it, but it's, um, it's something if you're not too sure, try and get that top leech ribbon flying 50% of the time. It's a good guide. It's a good, it's a good starting point. Warwick, are you going to mention it later, but um, in terms of getting that twist, what are your controls that you're adjusting and how do you achieve that? Come you're going to come to that. Okay? Right. Uh, this is the over trim that's hooked. If it's over trimmed like that, the top leech wall will be hidden behind the sail. You might see it because the air's the airflow is going. Uh, I have it in there. Okay, basically it was hooked. The air's trying to get through it, and it's just it just can't go through each side of the sail. So it's a, there's a um, turbulence on the leeward side of the leech, 
that brings the, the leach ribbon around into that. So that's why you can't see it. So. A hooked leech is really good if you want to point quickly, you want to go slow and high. You really bring your mane a bit tighter, you, or you drop your backstab or something. And you, you really push the stone down and really just pinch high for a little bit. It's only a few times you want to do it. Off the starting line, you might want to be doing that. Or just if someone's just tacked on top of you and you want to just lead down, go high, you can do it. But usually it's not a thing you do for too long. You don't, usually don't want a too hooked to leech. Okay, so getting on to some of the controls that will affect the shape of sails. Um, the bangs are a very powerful one. Usually, uh, these days, most boats have 16 to 1 or 32 to 1 purchase on the banks, and so it's, they're very powerful. You just pull a little bit on your string that you've got on the deck, and because of the purchases, you're doing quite a, quite a lot of pressure on the boom. Um, Bank sheeting is an expression people use. It usually comes from uh, dinghy sailing and uh, maybe fly 15s as well. As it gets windier, you pull the bang on more and more because it makes the boat go faster. It just it locks the the boom into the mast, makes it uh, it bends the mast a bit because it's the pressure's here, and so the boom pushes the mast this way, so it bends the mast a bit and locks it in and. Then when you ease the sheet, when it's really windy, you're easing the sheet, it's pushing the mast out to windward as well. So it actually quickly depowers the boat. And it's a, for dinghies, it really works. So like you hear a lot of bang sheeting on dinghies. 505s, Dutchman, all those boats, they all do this bang sheeting. So once, once you're using the main sheet, the main sheet is just swinging the boom out like a gate. The, the bang is controlling the, uh, the leech pressure. Now what happens is when you get the bang on nice and tight because it's been windy and the wind drops off a bit, you ease your main sheet but you've forgotten the bang's still on. And so the leech is still tight and the wind's dropped so the wind pressure's not in the sail. And so you've got to make sure the bang's released as well. It's really uh, something that I fall for it so often to forget the bang's on tight and you're easing sail because if you're sailing in uh, places where the pressure differences a lot. Um, Sometimes you're sailing with well, wind and mark under a hill or something like that. You've been in strong winds, and as you get further up towards the top of the course, the wind gets lighter. You want to, uh, you're easing the mains, you're trying to put a bit more twist in the sail, a bit more shape in the sail, and the bang's still on you, so if you can't do this. The other thing you can do in this bang sheeting, some, uh, even etchels, it works in the good breeze and etchels, um, dragons, it probably still works in those. You pull the bang on tight, if you get near the top mark, you should have got to remember to let it off a bit. Because you can break booms very easily if you've really been very powerful with it. Um, the bang can control the twist a lot as well. That's one of the reasons why you're using it anyhow. Um, on etchels, I, I don't know, um, maybe some other ones. From the etchels, um, downwind, we use, we trim the mainsail with the bang, not with the main ship. So um, uh, on the etchels, we let the rig forward a lot, but we let the boom ride out, and the, we have the traveller in the centre line. And um, as the, the main sheet's cleaved off, and as the pressure's changing with the gust coming down, uh, we use the bang, pull the bang on to hold the leech in the right position. So that if you don't have it on, the leech will twist forward when the gust comes through. Particularly in the harbour here, when the pressure's changing a lot, as the gust comes, we bring the bang on a bit, and it just holds that leech in position. And then when the pressure goes away, the It'll, if it bangs on, the leech will come back, and you don't want that, so you ease it off to try. You try to keep the leech in the same position all the time. So that's the main sheet control downhill of the bang. I don't know how it works. On the Fly 15s, it's a bit different because your boom doesn't go as a, as a deeper angle, so it's still it's something to think about how much twist you have in the, in the leech in your main. Uh, laser sailors here. X lasers, it. <laughs> um, yeah, then, then you probably use a bang a lot downhill, not lasers. And you definitely go easier at the top mark. Yeah, top you trip over them, yeah. yeah. So you have it on going uphill and then you, you blow it as you get the top mark. Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's the last uh, thing that? Deck stepped or not? Uh, 
Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, if you, if you, if you're, um, we're going to that. Yeah. I'm trying to think, actually, because you, often if, you, if you're, you're through the deck, you've got a um, four and a half. The flight fifteen has got a four and a half control thing. Uh, the actuals have got chocks and stuff. So I guess it's not so important these days. Um, some people. I have seen it in places like Perth where they sail on Swan River and it's quite windy. But they actually have a free floating gate. There's no ram there, they just let the mask go through and they figure that's gust response. It's a bit unusual, but it's so if you bang there you it wouldn't be doing quite the same effect. I, I, it's a bit <coughs> serious, really. I don't think you don't think I will really learn much from one or the other from that. Sorry about it. It's not as good. Excuse me. Uh, if you, if you move up to big boats, you know, the 40, 50 foot, so uh, how much? Yeah, because do, do you do with the line there? Yeah, you, you still do it. Um, you just to bang a lot in the, the bigger boats, but um, it has less effect. You've got a you've got a traveller down the back, right, mm. right at, the, at the end yeah. of the boom. You've got a main sheet. You've got mm. a um, you're usually grunting that on, and you're dropping traveller, and you're, you're using that. So you, yeah. It, it, the vang's there, but it's that's not so important. I was thinking big boats when I forget to let the vang off. It's like yeah, because the vang is sort of way forward up near the yeah. front of the cockpit, and you're down the back trimming a main. You sort of forget that the vang's still on. You know, that's that's usually the big boats where I forget about the vang. Um, you can you can use it. Usually they haven't got as many purchases. You, it's like you've got a much bigger rig and so mm -hmm. bigger mast, bigger boom. It's not the same thing as on a smaller boat. It's, uh, Purchases and not giving that power to, to do a lot, so it doesn't seem to work as much. It really doesn't. So big boats, you use it. You use it for again controlling a twist downhill. Um, but you you got to just make the important thing on big boats is letting it off. Because yeah. when you bring your traveller up above centre line, you just forget. You're looking. So why is this so look like this? The vang's cleared, and that's like three people forward who has got to let it off. So it's not, it doesn't have the quite the same effect as this thing shooting even dinkies is a big deal. Uh, right, uh, Cunningham is the other one to control. You don't use a Cunningham usually on a, if you've got a new mainsail, you, you be very gentle on your Cunningham because you don't use it enough. If you've got an old mainsail, what happens is a lot of the boats, the, the bolt rope, which is up, it goes in your track, I mean, they shrink on the normal mainsail. So you've got to often pull a Cunningham on just to get rid of those ugly creases off the front of your sail. So it's a, that's when you can use a, a Cunningham. But when it gets in light air, usually you don't use much Cunningham at all. But as the wind comes up, you're pulling more and more Cunningham down because you're trying to bring that draft forward from usually maybe 50%. You pull the Cunningham on and you want to move it to 40 or 30 percent You want to try and, what you're doing is you, you're forcing the draft forward. You're putting some, if you look this way, the pressure this way, the cunning goes this, this, this yeah, the pressure of the cunning goes this way, it's bringing your draft forward. What it's doing is flattening out the back part of your main so That's what you're really trying to do. You want to get rid of the fullness. As the wind gets stronger, you don't want to be tripping over your uh, main so You want to be spilling the air out a bit easier, quicker. And so you're trying to drive the, the draft forward. I don't know why this diagram is not mine, by the way. It's 60%. You wouldn't, you don't want that. But it's going from they say 40% if you want to, it gets windy and you want to go to 30%, you, you really pull the cunning on tight when it's windy. But that's, it's got to be over 15 knots really before you should be pulling the cunning on super tight. You might be pulling it on an old mainsail in light air just to just put a bit of tension on just to get rid of those stretch marks with the, with the bolt wrap shrunk. That's, that's the only, it's just something to do. New, new mainsails, you often have you see the creases coming off, the nice horizontal creases, leave them there, they're okay. It's not going to matter. But it can, cutting them can move the shape forward to pull it on. That's what you use it for. Now your, your out haul, there's another sail just if you sail too full. The out haul is really affecting the bottom part of your mainsail. It's not, the out haul's got nothing to do with further up, it's just the the bottom third of your main sort of um, And <coughs> there's different boats, different things. I'm trying to think of this. If we're, 
on the big boats, so we're talking about big boats at the moment, the big boats we're using uh, in pullers, we bring, we bring the jib sheets in much narrower, so you need to be pretty flat off the bottom of your main, so that you can't have a really deep mainsail and the, the leech of your jib in really tight, because just the air can't get through that slot. So, so generally you're pulling your outer line quite tight there. On most other boats, you're trying to pull your outer line to just even up the shape of the sail in this area here. If you look at the shape there, and you leave the outer out till the shape follows the same line. That's usually what I do. Um, you don't, going upwind, you, I don't really like to pull them outer line super tight unless I'm sailing a big yacht or unless I'm in, it's windy, it's windy, you really want to pull it on, you're trying to flatten the sail. Um, if you're in waves, you want to have a bit more shape in the foot of your sail because if you're in waves, you need more twist in your sail and so you need a bit more power down low. So you, you ease your outer lock in waves. In flat water, you can pull your outer on, on a bit more than what you normally would. So these are just general guidelines. Uh, this is all up in white. It's all up in I'm only talking about them. And so um, the outer can change the shape of the bottom third of your sail. Okay. Um, okay. Twist, twist, good, but too much twist is not so good. Um, it's, uh, a technique I used to let's go back to big boats. Um, and it sort of works in etchels and most other boats. Is um, often your main sheet's cleated on these sort of boats, and so maybe it's not for more dinghy boats. But, um, usually going into attack. We say you're ready about it or something like that, and then you, the, the main sheet person eases the main sheet just a bit and lets it off. So the boom goes up a bit, it's a bit more twist. Then he goes across with the traveller, brings it up, puts it back in the position it was on the other side after attack, and then five seconds, ten seconds later, brings the main sheet back on to where it was. So that you've had twist. You're coming out of the tack with twist. So you're getting nice, easy flow of the sail after you've gone head to wind out the other side. So you've got a bit more twist out of the tack. The traveller's already back in the same position it was the previous tack. And then you just slowly wind the sail on, it's, bringing the, it's reducing the twist really as you're accelerating. And you're back, then you get back to your normal setting. So that's sort of why that, that's there. Um, if it's gusty and stuff, there's always an argument about what do you play. Do you play the backstay? or you play the traveller, or you play the main sheet. It's like for your gust response. Um, I'm a bit old school, I like the traveller a lot, but um, a lot of people say you should be using the main sheet because it twists the sail more, and it gets rid of the, the, um, the healing moment of the sail because you're twisting the top off, so you're still sailing on the bottom part of the sail. Um, it's something which you're more comfortable with, which some people like one and one, like the other. Okay, I talked about the hooking before. It slows you down, but you can actually point a bit higher momentarily. I just got some pictures here. This is a showing twist. It's actually not showing a lot of twist. This one, <laughs> but again, here's these re leech ribbons I talked about. There's one here. There's one here. There's one up there, which you, you can just spot it there. Most of the most of the time, you never look at these. Just, I never look at them. You can take them off. So I don't know why they're there. But uh, the top one is the important one. Right? Yeah, the top that. Um, here I'm just trying to compare two, two types of boat. Here's a laser. Five adjustments in a laser mainsail. Uh, it's just sort of the normal things you can play with. Here's an Etchell's headsail without the mainsail. So as you get the bigger boats, they get all the fine tunes and they get all the other things you can adjust. So I think I've counted 18 adjustment things just for a headsail on an Etchell's. Um, the dragons are similar. Uh, big boats are getting the same way, you've got things, maybe not quite as many as this bit. Um, so these are all the, the things you can have to adjust the heads. So this is why you, it can get complicated. And what you try and do is narrow it down and just try and do the, simplify it by just doing the most key, key uh, adjustments. It's just a, um, 
shooting angles and things are sort of coming onto here. Um, I've got a photo of a flying 15 uh, Hetzel here. This is a low aspect Hetzel. You can see it's actually, the foot's curled there, but it, you can see it's quite long in the foot, not that high in the leech. So it's, it's sort of like uh, 45 to 55% length of one to the other. Whereas the Etchels or, okay, Dragon's more low aspect as well. Etchels is much more high aspect. It's much shorter in the foot, higher in the, the leech. So the sheeting angles are going to be different from different sails. Uh, and I'm trying to depict them here. Usually, for a high aspect sail like this front one, you're sheeting more down the leech this way. Whereas a, a longer foot, shorter leech, you're more the angles more back. And there's no precise way to do this, but um, often it's just good to, if you're not, there's no pressure in the sail and you're sitting on a dock or something, put your jib up. And you feel the tension there and there. If you can feel it, the boat's not huge. <laughs> it's not a yacht, but it's a, it's a dinghy or a flying to do so. You can just feel the tensions and just see that you're getting a similar sort of tension. You don't want the foot the sheeting angle too far back here, and this is really tight and this is really loose, because you know you're going to be the wrong sheeting angle. So it's, um, generally you just know a uh, high aspect sail, you're more down the leech. You've got a longer leech, much shorter foot, so you've got to get some tension on this leech, some control over this leech, and you can't have the angle back here because the leech is too long, this will be just too tight. So, You've got, most boats have got jib car positions you can adjust. You find the happy medium, and that's what you sail with most of the time. In light air, some people say move the car forward. I don't prescribe to that. I think in light air, you just ease the sheet tension a bit. I think the angle should be the same. In heavy air, you can move it back a bit, because you want, you want that leech to twist off more. You want, you want to spill a bit more wind in heavy air. So, you can bring the car back a little bit in heavy air from your, your normal setting. I don't think going forward is an ideal because going forward in light air, you've got to be very subtle with how much sheet tension you have to have because you're, you're sheeting more down the leech than what you would normally and you can over trim it and you can have hooked leeches in your head source and stuff. So, um, my preferred thing is to find your right sheeting angle on your jib. You leave that boy up to 15 knots, probably something like whatever you your weight limit is and what your balance is, but once it gets, you're really healing too much and you want to start to spill some wind, then you can bring your jib car back. If you've got a hole, maybe one hole, if it's a slider thing, you just bring it back, whatever it is, relative to your size of the boat. You allow a bit more twist in a breeze. Okay, any questions? This sort of is, it's, it's very imprecise what I'm doing because we've all got different sorts of boats. Um, on the actuals, Jimmy's photo, so we've got the, the plunger hole, so it's, I think it's about an inch or something, we just go back one hole. On uh, I've got a question. How, how do you define the, how, how do you um, de define your sort of ideal standard conditions to give car for the show? Okay, so you, um, if, you, if, if you're too far forward, you're going to have too much foot round on your, your jib and the leech is going to be too tight. If you go the other way, your foot's going to be really straight and tight, and your leech is going to be twisted off too much. So they're the extremes. So you've got to find the middle ground there. Um, you just got to find that middle ground. And so on the Does yacht, the sailmaker tell you? <laughs> sailmaker could get on board and sort of help out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And is there a, is there a th thing like, you look at the telltales and the way the telltales break, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's helpful. true, it's actually a good one. You have, if you've got telltales all the way up your sail, vertically, you'd like them, ideally you'd like them all to break together. So you have the window ones lifting down the bottom third, the middle and the top, they all lift together. But um, usually you want the top one to lift a little bit more earlier than the bottom yeah. ones anyhow, because so, you've got a bit of twist. So It's a bit imprecise, as I said, it's very hard to find it. You find out what you're happy with, you go sailing, and you go back to the two boat thing, boat sailing along. If you find you're doing well, you go well, and you're, you're pretty happy with it. You're hitting your target numbers, you've got your poles or something. You use those other tools. But you, you try and look at it. If, if 
you're um, at the foot of the jib is just too tight, you can see, you'll see it's just it's really tight, so the shape of the jib, a bit further up, has got this nice shape, and then you get the foot really tight. It just doesn't look right, so you just bring the car forward. So, is there a question there? Yeah, yeah, I wonder whether moving the car forward and back, uh, do it help with the pointing? If I want to point better, would yeah, I it move will, it back or move it if, forward? If you've got your car too far back, you've got your foot tight, but your leech is twisted up. So, this, the, um, the angle of attack of your sail is wider than what it should be. It should be in narrow. So it means if your leech is twisted off too much, you've got too much twist, and that's if your car's too far back, then the, uh, the wind under the sail will be at the wrong angle. So the leech is just twisted off. So you need to bring the leech in to be really tight. You need a firm leech. And you need point to try, because that's going to help you to point. Okay. So what do you do when you use these engines? Um, in haulers on the big boats, so in haulers on it. Um, okay, Jamie put some in haulers on yeah, his actual here. Yeah. He's trying to improve the sheeting angle, bring the, the <coughs> sheeting angle in so he can point on it. Okay, but it, without disturbing the flow on his mate. So it's um, it's what the big boats have been doing now. The TP52s are down into like five degrees. Their angle. In the old days it used to be 12 degrees, 13 degrees is the angle of attack. What I'm talking about here is the bow of the boat. Here's your satellite. So your jib used to come out around around the shroud here and come back here. In the old days, remember the big Genoas and small mainsails and IOR boats and things? Uh, whatever. Even the Dragons still have them and Flying Fish still have them. And so this angle here used to be um, 12 degrees, 13 degrees. Now with the um, really efficient TB 52s they've got their jibs in here. This angle here is five degrees. It's really narrow. So by having it the angle in here, the wind, uh, this jib, the angle has to be here. This jib, the angle has to be there. So basically, you're pointing that much higher into the wind because the jibs are in closer. The idea is, the more you sheet inboard, the more you can point up. Well, as long as it's not affecting your mainsail. But, but all that, let me know, won't the sails be cut this up? Right? Well, well, you, 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 you have to recut the sails. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not too sure what Jamie did, he didn't really go on about it, but he thought it was a good thing sometimes. Okay. Um, well, on on the dragon, we put the in haulers on right. so that we can we can sheet in a little more without having too much tension. Right. Because you, we are light You're still so. wrapping around the shroud as well. well you so the whole foot sort of a bit weird, but you you can control the leech twist. Yes. Right. Yes. But because right. you're further inboard, you can you can sheet a little more without sheeting hard. I don't know if I can explain it uh, in the other way. I, I know certain boats of sail, like the J80s, there's some J80 sailors here. I think you're sheeting too far out in the J80s. And um, when I've sailed them, I try and bring the window jib sheet on and use that as your in-haul. Right, so I think, you know, I think the J80s have got a, quite a wide sheeting angle. And so you haven't got a mechanism to sheet in. So I use the window jib sheet, bring it around the mast, around there, and put that on the window winch and bring the jib sheet in with the window, window jib sheet. You can get another four or five degrees of it. Uh, it works on certain other boats too. Um, A35s, it works on a few boats of sailor. You try and, you try and in haul the thing, because what you're looking for is when you bring it in like that, you look at your mainsail, you look at the, uh, the luff of your mainsail. Here's your mast, and here's your mainsail. If this part of the mainsail's luffing, you've got the, the air off the jib is affecting it. Right, so the air is going through here, this, the slot as I talk about. Now this is all disturbed at the front, you've got your jib in too far. So you know you've got to bring it out. Right, so you, you try and bring it in as far as you can without disturbing the flow of the main. So you look at some, you, the mainsail is usually, um, you can just look up and see if it's feathering there. You shouldn't have walls there, but you can just see the cloth and see it shimmering. You know that the jib's affecting it, so you've got to move it out. 
So similarly, if it, even if you've got the normal sheeting, if you find that the luck of the mainsail is affected, it means your jib leech is too tight. You've got to get a bit more twist in your jib. Okay. Okay. Um, right. um, if you've got, um, if you haven't got overlapping jibs, you've got the high aspect, 105% jibs that we usually have in a lot of the boats today. Often you put marks on your spreaders, so that you can put, see the leech. If you mark here, here's, here's your jib, the luff of the jib, here's the leech of your jib. You go and sight behind it, you, you see the jib trimmer on a big boat, he's sitting on the winch, and he's looking up, he's, he's not standing in the set line, he's actually sitting directly behind the winch, looking forward, and he sees where the leech of the sail is against his marks on his spreader, so he can wind the thing on to where he wants it to be. On a uh, Etchells, we've got the marks on the spreaders. Um, the, the standard mark on Etchells, Etchells are very simple, they've got the same spreader brackets and there's a, a kink in the spreader, it goes out parallel and it gets tapered. Where that taper starts, usually put a, a, a bit of tape around there and that's where you bring your leech into all the time. Once you've done that, once you've found your ideal spot, uh, some boats have three marks like that, so they might have a a light air, medium air, heavy air sort of setting. I prefer one because just it's a. You can then go, having three marks is confusing to some people, particularly if you've got different crew coming on board all the time. If you've got one mark, it's much easier. But um, what you can do then is um, you can duplicate the setting every time from tack to tack. You go to the same spot, you bring your leech in that, there. You know that's pretty much where you want the leech to be, and that's where it just doesn't affect your mainsail anymore. Uh, uh, they're really good guides. Um, if it gets windy, then you can say, okay, I'll move it out to a, uh, three inches outside the band or something. And, or you have the up to, as I said, you have a light, medium, and heavy air setting for your, your leech positions. So it's only for boats that have got the jibs inside the, the spreaders. Okay, if, you're going, if you've got the wraparound genoas going around the shrouds, well then you, you're pretty much winding your genoa in to a distance off the top spreader. And that's what you're looking at. Um, the one spreader, you've only got one spreader. So you're just bringing, you, you, you get used to how you see how close the, the sail gets to the spreader. And you just you duplicate that. I think on a dragon they talk about four inches off the spreader. The width of a beer can. The width of a beer can, yeah. That's close to four inches. Okay. Three okay. inches. Okay, so, um, yeah, so every boat is because they think that you, you get used to that. It's really good to replicate it. It's really good for uh, beginning trimmers who don't know what they're doing on the head source. They can just tell them, go to that mark on the leech. The important thing is, on the big boats, make sure they don't sit inboard and look out because there's parallax error coming into it. So you want to get behind the winch and look <coughs> sort of parallel to the center line of the boat and look up at the leech that way. Don't sit in a different position because it'll, it'll look different. Uh, there's something else I want. Uh, some pictures. Okay, there's um, this is the uh, mandrake, the old mandrake. This is the reference point of the thing, and this is the tip just out, leech just outside. Uh, yeah, it's quite a flat looking jib there, if you, if you appreciate it. It's, it's looks very flat there. It's like a heavy air jib. This is showing a bit of twist, not much. Uh, the, yeah, it's hard to see. There's the, there is an in hauler there. I think that's it there. It's pulling the, the, the jib in a little bit to put a bit of shape down the foot. So you can control the shape a lot with that in the hole. That's well outboard there. Okay, I'm nearly finished. Um, head source sag, it's very hard to see. A lot of people can't see head source sag. Unless, unless on a big boat you can go up to the bow and stand there and look up it and you can see it sagging off. Um, if you're on a smaller boat, you try and sight and uh, try and get back and look at the mast and see the sag of the forestay off the mast and use a mast as a reference point. But just looking at a forestay, it's hard to see the sag. It's just it's a, you need a reference point, something to see. 
Um, most jibs will sag, and most four stays will sag. It's just about of how much. And it depends on how much backstay you might have on if you've got backstay, or how much main shift tension you have on. That's how you control the sag. Um, you control it. You, sometimes it's a, again, it's a rig setup thing. You might want some sag. It's light air. You want quite a bit of sag because it moves your, the luff of your sail away from the center line in the middle. And it makes you point higher in light air. And so you do that the, on the dock before you leave. You might lengthen your forestay before you go out sailing. So you, in light air, you lengthen your forestay. It does a few things. It um, gives some pre-bend in your mast, which you might think I come to. But um, it also just softens up the luff if you just, it eases your rig tensions. If you're on a, a flying 15 or something, you, you may not feel <coughs> your, your jib halyard on as much. But your jib four stays, your four stay of your jib, you may have it eased a bit just to have the rig softer so that it has a bit more stay. It's good for light air. Um, really, you want it as tight as you can if it's windy, you know, so you pull everything on top tight. <laughs> um, so control, as I mentioned before, you control it with the backstay. So if you pull your backstay on tight, it'll make your forestay go tighter. So it's a, it's a really good gust response control of your backstay. If you got, um, if it's easy to play your backstay, and most a lot of boats have backstay, the flying fishing is done. But the, if you got a backstay, if you a quick response, if a gust comes, you just pull the backstay on immediately. And what it does are two things. It, it means that the, uh, the top of the mast comes back, it twists the mainsail more, and it tightens the luff more. By tightening this, this comes back, this leech twists off more, this forestay gets tighter, and therefore, as this gets tighter, it's getting luff, it's pulling the luff of the sail of the jib forward, and it's <coughs> twisting the leech of your jib as well. So it's a, you're immediately getting twists in both sails, which relieves that gust pressure that you've got. It's, it spills that air. So when the gust hits, you've got these sails on nicely trimmed, a nice bit of twist, but not too much. When the gust hits, you don't want to heel over and sort of slow down and lee bow and, you know, well, you want to go forward. So pulling the backstay on as the gust hits means that both sails twist off immediately and hopefully you just shoot forward in the gust without just this heeling over motion. Ideally, as you're sailing along down the wind, you're trying to keep your boat this constant heel. You're not trying to have it going up and down. I guess you want it to sail the same way. So, some boats you want to sail them bolt up by the flat, and some you want to sail with a slight heel on them. You want to keep that constant. <coughs> so, you can see a gust coming in the water. You see it's about to hit, and a quick, good gust response is to pull that back side under it. Push a button if you can do it, or however you, however you do it. And it's just the boat can then the gust hits and the boat stays the same constant angle and just shoots forward. You get an acceleration of it. And then as the gust is going, you then go back to your settings and ease it back again where you were. What more how, how much is that putting that back stay on effect to the camera at the top of the side? And how important is that versus the opening it's, it's by this coming mask coming back, this is bending here. It's making a, it's just twisting a sail up. As the sail twists, it goes flatter anyway. The, the, the fullness of the sail. If, you, if you've got a lot of uh, a main sheet tension on, you've got, you've got a, you know, a camera in your sail, as soon as you uh, pull the backstay on the top of the mast twist, the, the sail twists, it just goes flat. It's just you're losing a lot of the camber out of the top of your sail. I remember Burns Fellow, were you at the Burns Fellow talk? Oh, yeah. Earlier this year, he, he was saying that camber is the single most, for him, the single most important aspect of sail control that he was looking at, followed by twist, followed by craft. I'm just, I'm just wondering whether that piling on the back step, obviously it's doing two things at once. Because you're getting on the rig here, you've got your shrouds coming up here, four stay. As you pull the back stay on here, this top bit goes, so it's only this part's going back. This bit goes forward, so it's affecting your, it's your shape down there. But the often you've got controls down here to stop that mask going too far forward. So often the, the major bend is going to be at the top of it. There's going to be a, a resultant forward thrust down here, but not quite as much. But it's really just spilling the top part of yourself. I mean, so it's just a, it's a gust response thing I'm trying to guide here. And then if it is windy, you want to, I'm going rigged here now, 
you want to shorten the force day in canners before you leave the dock. And then you, you, you're getting rid of that luff sag. You try to keep them, you're trying to reduce the luff sag and have a, a shorter force day. So the big boats you go and put spanners up there and we're, we're adjusting it, um, the length of the force day just to control the mast bend and it controls the shape as well. If you're using the uh, force day in light air and, and your mast is a through to the whole mast, your, your, your deck and your, your step are fixed. The length of your force day, the mast will then bend back more. It's called pre bend without putting any extra load in anything else. It's, you've got a pre bend in your mast and it's getting a, rid of, a bit of shape in your mainsail. And therefore, what it means is you don't have to pull as much backstay on or something to make your main sort of a bit flatter and a bit softer. You've got the pre bend doing the work for you. So it's just a rig setup. Thing. On a flying 15, how much would you adjust the luff? You know, we have an integral force stay with the jib. Yeah. But so you could adjust the luff tension. Yeah. yeah. So yours is, you haven't, you're not independent, you haven't got a backstay. Um, would, you, would you adjust the luff tension at all? Before you go out, or would you just set it and then leave it? Uh, no, I, as I said earlier, I think in lighter air, I wouldn't pull the jib halyard on. Not, the not, jib, not jib halyard the, is your force day in a, in a flying machine. Not the rig tension, but just the, 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 the sail, sail, sail cloth as well. Exactly. I'd be, if I was racing flying machines, I'd have a Cunningham on the jib, the tack adjustment on the but jib. But we don't. Some do. I've, do seen one, I've seen one in the UK. It goes through the inside the furl and comes back to the cockpit. I, I put one on. I like uh, tack adjustments on jibs. Uh, it's the same thing as what it's uh, coming in on the mainsail. Uh, we have them on the actuals and I have it led back to on Jimmy's boat. We have it led back to the side deck. It's one of the adjustments we use a lot. Um, so again, it's a cutting in for a jib. Tack adjustment. So I would suggest to put them on if you can. You run what the line down the, through the inside the furl. The rather rig tension. The rig tension, as I said, just in lighter air, just don't really jam it on tight. Just have it a bit slacker. Or if it goes light, let let ease it off a bit. Yeah. 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 They're all on. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, easy yeah. to adjust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to sort of soften the rig up. You, you know, your liver shroud goes quite slack there. But yeah, on, on smaller boats like that, your main sheet tension can affect your jib sag. Because you haven't got a backstay. So if you pull your main sheet on too tight, You've tightened the leech of your mainsail, but you're also tightening the luff of the jib. The van so can be do careful. that as well. The van can do it as well, yeah. Okay. Uh, what am I doing here? Straight and loose and spread. Again, the spreader marks on this uh, sail here. Quite a nice sail. It's fairly flat shaped, like all that. This is very hot in the bow, in the luff. Very, very forward draft there, so not too good. Not too good. You'd want to do something about that. Are you looking at cooking that one? What straighter view? It's very wobbly here from this view. Uh, okay, better shape there, drafts come back a bit. Okay, this is just a very general thing I've thrown in to just make you think about things to do. In light winds, you, know, so you don't usually sail below four or five knots, or they won't start you in most race offices. Sometimes you get caught in that, so I've just said light winds at four and five knots. You want a fairly full shaped sail, maximum draft sail, you know, don't make it full, E sheeting and lots of twist. The draft positions around about 50% after the mast and if you've got instruments and stuff you're probably sailing at 50 degree true wind angle and you want jib tell tiles flying so this is a sort of quite light winds you're sailing a wider angle you've got to keep the boat going keep the sail on. as the wind gets up you've got all your crew weight out you're hiking hard you've, you've got your, your your writing moments of max and you've got to sort of start flattening your sail so you do it with your cutting end, with your, you move the drive forward a bit, you um, pull a bit of backstay on if you can, you do all those things, a bit more out all on, all those adjustments to try and uh, get the right angle. And then you're coming up, you're probably 10 degrees higher than that thing, you're sailing about 40 degrees true in angle. 
in most boats. Mm -hmm. Depends on your boat. And the heavy winds, these are the things you can do. You want the draft further forward, you're really pulling it coming on tight. You're putting a vang on probably, you're doing a lot of backstay. You're really trying to lay that so I make the sail a lot flatter so you don't have so much healing moment and you're not you know, having, you don't need the drive and so the boat's going fast anyhow. You're trying not to trip over and not to heal over too much. You're trying to flatten out the sails and get some nice twists so that you, you can uh, track forward. Okay, and then I finish up. <laughs> we could all be sailing rigid sails in the future. <laughs> America's Cup are going to a solid sail, so you mightn't have any of these adjustments ever again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, oh, I have one. It's regarding the Genoa jib bracing over the fourth state. You know, I saw the the, the photo of the, the Frank 50. Uh, you got a fourth day and Genoa laugh is covering the steel foot of two on top. Uh, and on a flat you've got the four stay and you've right. got the the, the, the lap of the jib is, is yeah. around the four stay. Right, yeah. right. But uh, there's still a lot of uh, length uh, up right to the top of the four stay and the back. So I wonder yeah. whether it would it perform uh, better if you have yeah, your channel yeah, or I, jib I, I on top. I prefer the, to have your jibs down as low as you can to the deck just because it, there's a theory. You know, in light air, you want the maximum sail area. When it gets windy, you want to reduce sail. So if you're on a big boat, you're going to put smaller jibs on as it gets windy. You go from a number one to a number two, number three, and usually they're getting a bit smaller. On a one design boat, you can't do that, but usually you want the maximum area in light air. So therefore, usually you want to get the jib down as low as you can to get whatever wind you can off the deck, as well as what's going through the sail. So you, you keep all the pressure. You don't want the air to be going through underneath the jib. You try and trap the air so it's a, they call it an end plate effect. It's like a, on an aeroplane wing, got a, 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 at the end they've got that vertical thing on the wings. It's trying to stop the air escaping too easily off the end and creating turbulence. So, so same thing with the jib, your, your deck's the end plate. So, so you, want, you, you want the jib down close to the deck. So the deck sweeper, what we call it, is a good thing. So it's just the deck. You try and get it down be. there. Yeah, so on air tools we've got a rounded foot and usually the middle of the foot is just touching the deck. Uh, flying 15s, I try and adjust it so that you can adjust the lens to bring it down low. I thought, you know, the, the concept that the wind up there high is faster. Yeah, that's right. Because when it's windy, you don't want it to... Yeah. So usually you want the extra area and extra power in light air so you bring it down. That's that's usually the reason. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In uh, wavy conditions, like normal wind, medium wind, what do you adjust first to get the twist? The main sheet, the traveler, or the backstay? What do you what do you, what do you choose to do first? In wavy conditions, yes. in waves. Okay. Um, in waves. Because you're, you're steering a course like this over waves, you're going up a wave and down, right? Usually in waves you have more twist and you have more fullness down low. So I don't know what's first, but usually you you have your, as I said before, you have a bit more out or off, a bit more fullness down low on the boom there, uh, but you need more twist than what you would normally have in flat water because you're, because you're changing direction a lot as you're steering through the waves. You need a, a softer leech. You can't have a, a rigid leech because sometimes it'll be perfect, but often it won't be perfect for the, the angle of attack on the wind because you're steering through the waves. So you need a, a softer leech which can handle the change of direction because you're steering a change of direction. If you assume the wind was constant, because you're steering one direction, you need a sort of softer leech. You need a, a leech that can respond automatically itself because you can't change it quickly enough is you can't be tripping a mainsail like this as you're changing steering like this. So you've got to try and make it simple. So basically you just have more twist than what you would normally in fact want. How you go about it is um, could be pulling more backstay on. It could be just easing your main sheet a bit. That could be as simple as that. Um, depends on the boat really is how you do it. If you had a choice between travel or down but traveler up more main sheet off in that lumpy condition? 
Um, travel down or travel up. Usually you have, when you've got the lumpy conditions, you usually got a bit of wind, right? You're not like yeah. it. It's light. Sometimes you get not too And so usually your traveller, you leave alone, really. You might travel, might be on satellite or something. To, um, it's sheet tension, really, I guess. It's backstay. You know, big boat, big boat, and talk around or? Yeah, in this instance, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you often see boats now, they seem to be leaving it on the centre line as opposed to dropping it down the traveller, putting some twists in there, and, and at least driving the boat on the bottom part of the main. Yeah, it's true. Um, because the big boats, you've got the inhaulers as well, so you really can't drop the traveller down too far too early because your inhaulers still on. You've got to you be using your inhaul at the same time, and so that's two jobs and you don't do it. So you leave your traveller up to where it was, you see sheet a bit and just twist it because it's just it does the top of your sail and the bottom sail so sta stays where it was which is fits in with the slot it's just a quicker adjustment i think um yeah we do that a lot um i just came back from roger we were on mandrake and we were sailing with the traveler way up above center line in light air and the boom was this far above the, the back stay just you know, so in light air and then we just slowly ease it down so um, we try and keep the boom on centre line for as long as we can when the breeze is up. But then it, if it gets too hard, you just got to drop it down. But then you're easing your in hauler out as well, so the sails are okay. Thank you very much, Warwick. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's only the first half of the story. Obviously, we need to go downwind. So, uh, Steve yes. is here to talk about downwind <coughs> sailing. Um, do you need a little time to set up? Or? Uh, yeah, sure, good break. Okay, so if you help yourself for a drink, maybe back in here for five minutes, and Steve will talk about downwind sailing with spinnakers. Uh, so, uh,